ton of money. Television shows too, from 30 minute meals to $40 a day. Do you think, think, do you think things are lost by spending less money and time on meals? I think about money, I, I begin with the fact that my mother was one of 10 children. Mm -hmm. To me, has the richest life of, of any human I've ever met. Her quality of life wasn't based on what was in their bank account. It was how much time they spent together. And then each person learned their value in the family. One person was great at uh, sewing, and then they became the family seamstress or tailor. Another person was great at music. They would be the entertainment at dinner. The, you know, the storyteller or the joker, you know, the, the beauty of large families, which not many people have anymore, is that you really can admire and see mm -hmm. the difference in, in everyone and the importance of them. And I think in a, you know, be young, have fun, drink Pepsi, earn as much money as fast as possible, then keep it and then keep it away from everybody else and have smaller families and get more and all. I think a little bit can be lost in there. I wouldn't trade my passport for any on the planet. I love being an American and all of the complications that comes with it. But I think there's a big complication in always being the first or the best or getting to here and not appreciating all of those hooks and crooks along the way and devaluing over time all of our jobs are important, not just technology or what's going to happen tomorrow in medicine or science, um, you know, the next thing Apple's launching. I miss growing up with people that admired stonemasons and shoemakers and tailors and uh, poets. You know, I miss growing up around people that appreciated everything about each other. And I think that we are coming back to that time because we've lived now for several years of everybody learning a new face to hunger, everybody learning a new face to need, everybody having neighbors that, oh my God, they were so successful and now where did they go? They've left our neighborhood. I think our face um, has changed a lot as a country and I think we're coming to know each other again. And I think that's a great opportunity. And most of um, talk radio and talk um, news shows, every morning I watch them. I'm at the gym every day, 5.45, 6. I watch everybody from Fox to MSNBC. It's all about division, you know, and this being the biggest division in our history. And I actually see a little bit of the opposite of that. I see around the edges. We're starting to try and look for each other again in each other and admire everyone's job and appreciate each other a little bit more. Money does not necessarily translate into quality. Sometimes by having less money makes you become more creative in food Can't get away fast enough. Food preparation, etc. Your ancestors from Italy and stuff, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of them, they didn't have a lot of money, but some of the greatest food and stuff, you don't necessarily need to have a lot of money. No, I think a to, lot to, of, to uh, well, certainly everybody knows the big comfort food movement, but way before that, and the last several decades in food have been about reinventing comfort food and, you know, all these gajillion dollar hamburgers and um, risottos. Risotto is rice. You know, pasta still pasta, and a burger still a burger. I mean, people go back to comfort food because we're trying to get back to a different era, maybe. And again, using food as the conduit. Um, I'm great at handling other people's money. <laughs> I'm lousy at handling my own. I hate the stuff, and I give it away as fast as I can. I don't think that that means you have to give up being a good business person or a savvy um, marketing professional. Our YAMO organization is a children's initiative because I don't have children of my own and I quite frankly don't have time to legitimately have them. Um, it was very important to me to be able to have an avenue for kids so I could see some kids 
going to school. We don't have VOTEC in public schools anymore. We do not have the culinary programs. The being a shop mechanic, um, being a carpenter, um, working in the food industry, these all used to be available in public school when I was a kid, I'm 45, and you could have vocational training for anything in a school where we only had 54 children in their graduating class. You could graduate and go become a mechanic or a carpenter or work in a, in a restaurant or a hotel. You'd have a job, you'd have a life you could be really proud of and earn a decent living. And that doesn't exist anymore. Home ec doesn't even exist. You know, people can't make dinner for themselves. The lunch hour has gone down to 20 minutes. Very few children even have recess. Most of them don't have a decent lunch. Many of them are not offered school breakfast anymore. If they are, it's an apple. And even that matters. But, you know, I spend a lot of my time lobbying just to get these things, you know, back into schools. I wanted to be able to send some kids to school because I didn't have any of my own. And I wanted to be able to feed hungry kids because I make my living through food. So we started our initiative that had three tiers. One third of the money goes to hunger relief. One third goes to lowering the obesity rate and getting families cooking. One third goes to a scholarship program for any um, public school child that wants to go into anything even remotely food related. So we started doing fundraisers and dinners and things, and I'm like, this doesn't make sense when you look at the net, net, net. So we created product lines that would attract families to cook together and products that would get families together and gave all of my proceeds to that thing to fund it, made this great little engine. So now we do that for animal relief too because my actual daughter is a pit bull 